Who are some of the most scandalous prison officers around? Let's find out, starting with... Number 6. The Neck Ordeal Melissa Goodwin, a former prison officer, got herself tangled up in a bit of a mess. Turns out, she was caught having personal relationships with not one, but two inmates, Corey London and Caleb Valeri, who had ties to a motorcycle gang. Now Melissa's trying to shake off her past and land a job in counterterrorism, but there's a problem. She's got this pretty gnarly tattoo on her neck that she thought might hurt her chances. So she underwent some seriously painful laser tattoo removal sessions to clean up her look. Back in 2021, Melissa managed to avoid jail time by owning up to her involvement with one of the inmates who was a teenager at the time. Instead, she got hit with a community corrections order and had to put in some hours of community service. Not exactly a walk in the park, but better than being behind bars where she probably should have been. And then there's the drama with Caleb, who was associated with the Rebels motorcycle gang. Things went south real quick between the two, with accusations flying around about a biting incident during an argument. Messy stuff for sure, but Melissa's putting it all behind her, rebranding herself as a feminist influencer and leaving her prison days in the rearview mirror. Melissa's definitely had her fair share of ups and downs, but it would seem like her judgment would be questionable at best. Hey, we're not saying she can't be in a relationship with whomever she chooses. Maybe both inmates were actually innocent and really great guys? Number five, inappropriate connections. Rachel Martin was a prison officer at HMP Guy's Marsh, a men's prison in the UK. HMP stands for Her Majesty's Prison, if you didn't know. Got in trouble after getting involved in a romantic roller coaster with inmate Raymond Abraham. Between November of 2020 and March of 2021, she sent him thousands of steamy texts, along with packages containing designer clothes and, oddly enough, women's underoos. Even further, she received over 12,000 pounds from him, bragging to a friend that her bills were sorted for the foreseeable future. But her shady dealings came crashing down when a routine search turned up a remote control adult toy in her jacket pocket, followed by a scandalous discovery in Abraham's cell. Officers found a mobile phone, USB sticks, and even some risque snapshots of Martin herself. After claiming she got sick at work and then promptly resigning, Martin's little fling took a brief hiatus, only to resume shortly after. Talk about commitment issues, huh? What's wild is that Martin had just finished an eight-week training stint where she ironically learned about conditioning, manipulation, and corruption awareness. The irony is thicker than mud, folks. Fast forward to April 1st, 2021, and no, this isn't an April Fool's joke, and the cops swoop in, uncovering a stack of cash, fancy receipts, and not one, but two phones loaded with messages and calls that would make your pastor faint. So what was Martin's defense? She played the classic, I was groomed card citing her recent breakup and her emotional vulnerability. Her lawyer even argued that Abraham was like a seasoned pro at this game, targeting her in her moment of weakness and showering her with cash for goodies. In the end, though, Martin pleaded guilty to nine counts of misconduct and got a not-so-fabulous 16-month vacation in the slammer. Lesson learned, be careful who you swipe right for, especially if they're behind bars. Number four, loving inmates. A prison officer named Emma Johnson landed herself in jail for sneaking iPhones to an inmate she had the hots for, Marcus Solomon. They were raking in cash and even had cute little conversations about it. Emma would tip off Marcus whenever there was a cell search coming up, giving him a heads up to stash the iPhones. But their sneaky operation came crashing down when a phone with Emma's digits was nabbed from an inmate. After getting busted, it was revealed that Emma and Marcus were deeply in cahoots. They were cahooting, if you will chatting about their phone smuggling antics left and right. They both pleaded guilty to conspiring to sneak phones into the slammer. Emma even admitted to money laundering. Derby Crown Court threw the book at Emma, slamming her with a 15-month jail stint, while Marcus got 13 months added on to his current sentence. Talk about a tough break. Their love story started when Emma was a prison officer at HMP Sudbury, where Marcus was doing time. But things got messy when Marcus got moved to another joint because everyone thought Emma was spending a little 
little too much quality time with him. The court heard Emma was also cozying up to another inmate who happened to have a phone in his cell, with Emma's number saved in it, no less. During sentencing, the judge made it clear that Emma's actions were a massive breach of trust. And let's be real, smuggling phones into prison? That's obviously a big no-no. Emma's lawyer tried to soften the blow, insisting she thought her love with Marcus was the real deal. But the judge wasn't buying it, pointing out Emma's messages urging Marcus to hustle those iPhones and giving him the heads up about searches. Now Emma's out of a job and bouncing around gigs, while Marcus moved on with a new squeeze and a new baby. And yet, this is still a better love story than Twilight. Number three, harboring escapees. Chloe Jones, a former prison officer, got herself into quite the pickle by falling head over heels for an inmate, Philip King. Now, this wasn't your run-of-the-mill crush either. Chloe let Philip crash at her place after he broke out of the clink. Chloe first crossed paths with Philip when she started working at a prison in Liverpool. Their innocent hellos soon turned into something more as they swapped over 3,000 texts while Philip was doing time. When Philip made a daring escape from prison in July of 2017, Chloe didn't hesitate to lend him a helping hand. She let him shack up at her parents' house and even let him borrow her car. Meanwhile, she kept her lips sealed about their romance to her bosses. But their love story took a wild turn when they got caught up in a police chase through Liverpool four months later in November of 2017. The chase did come to an end with both arrested, but Chloe tried to pull a fast one and gave Philip a fake name. But the name fooled no one, and the jig was up when she came clean the next day. While Chloe got a taste of the slam herself after the chase, she managed to escape charges initially. However, the law eventually caught up with her, and in October of 2018, she was back in cuffs and later charged with misconduct in a public office. Despite Chloe's claims that her relationship with Philip was all about love, the judge wasn't buying it. He slapped her with a 15-month prison stint on account of the seriousness of her breach of trust. Chloe may have thought her prison stint would be a breeze too, but it turns out it wasn't quite the school trip she assumed it was going to be when she was dropped off at an old-fashioned house instead of a cell block. Now she's facing the consequences of her actions, while Philip serves out an extended sentence for his part in the escapade. As for HMP Altcourse, Chloe's prison, they claim they're not messing around when it comes to maintaining order. They've made it clear they won't tolerate any funny business from their staff and will work closely with law enforcement to keep their house in order. Number two, one year sick. Three prison guards working at Rikers Island took part in a massive sick leave scheme and received hundreds of thousands of dollars from New York City taxpayers. The trio comprised of Monica Coxum, Eduardo Trinidad, and Stephen Cange. Coxum and Trinidad were engaged. How's the saying go? The couple that defrauds together is outlawed together? He was full of great relationship advice like that. Another one was, if she's gonna scam, then she'll steal you a ham. That man loves his hams. All three claimed sick leave for extended periods while still collecting their regular salaries. Stephen Cage was out of work from March 2021 to May 2022, but still received his full salary of roughly $160,000. He claimed he was suffering from vertigo and adverse side effects from the COVID vaccine. During this time, Cage devoted himself to working on his graphic novel, Cure of Utopia, which was released in 2021. Around that time, law enforcement officers saw him perform daily activities without signs of being unwell or injured. Trinidad reported multiple multiple injuries between June 2021 and November 2022. Whenever he had appointments with city officials, he wore a sling or walked with a cane. Like Cange, he received his full salary, which was over $140,000. He might have gone out of his way to look injured in front of city officials. A picture surfaced of Trinidad performing household repairs without any signs of physical distress. Coxum also faked injuries and illnesses and was paid her entire $80,000 salary. Coxum and Trinidad traveled together to the Dominican Republic, West Virginia, and Florida, all the while claiming to be too sick to work. Eduardo Trinidad and Monica Coxum were even planning their wedding during the time off and their upcoming nuptials were scheduled for July 23rd in upstate New York at a swanky venue. Posting evidence, Coxum reported injuring her shoulder, wrist, elbow, and knee, while Trinidad claimed he had hurt his knee, ankle, shoulder, wrist, fingers, hip, and elbow. The pair supposedly had several surgeries for their injuries, 
and afterwards said they couldn't work due to trauma. Once the DOC caught wind of the scheme, the jig was up. Federal agents accessed their phone records and iCloud accounts, where they found Coaxum bragging about defrauding her employer. In a group chat, she spoke about staying home and still getting paid. Each guard's union contract states that a Department of Corrections officer has unlimited paid sick leave for illnesses and injuries that make them incapable of doing their jobs. Once employees have been on sick leave for more than eight days in one year, they can only leave their homes between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. This somehow ensures the system isn't being misused. How clever can the Department of Corrections be? The pair submitted hundreds of fraudulent doctor's notes and worst of all, repeatedly broke the 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. restriction. Authorities arrested the trio in late 2022. Their charges included federal program fraud and cheating an organization that receives federal funds. Rikers Island is a notorious prison that's become quite known for being dysfunctional. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to stay right on this video for our past release to find out about even more prison guards who are just as crazy. Number 1. Contraband Smuggling Rio Morin thought she could outsmart the system by smuggling contraband and phones into a prison in the UK. But her luck ran out when cops raided her house and stumbled upon a treasure trove of illegal substances. As if that wasn't enough, the clueless delivery guy, Callum Riley, showed up mid-raid, trying to make a drop-off through the letter slot in her door. Morin's shady dealings came to light when she was nabbed by an anti-corruption officers at the prison in November of 2020. Turns out, Morin wasn't acting alone. She was cahooting with an inmate named James Millington and his partner, Claire Anderson. Millington, doing time at a different UK prison, was the go-to guy for the illicit goods, while Anderson played a role in the scheme too. Morin, clearly unfazed by her impending prison stint, decided to try her hand at hairdressing while awaiting trial. Yep, you heard that right. She traded in her prison blues for a pair of scissors and started posting ads on Facebook looking for hairdressing gigs to practice her skills for beauty college. But Morin's newfound career path didn't save her from the long hair of the law. She ultimately pleaded guilty to her crimes, conspiring to supply illegal substances and phones to the prison, conspiring to convey contraband and money laundering. The judge wasn't buying her sob story about being blinded by love or her attempt at a fresh start, slapping her with a two-year sentence. As for her partners in crime, they didn't escape unscathed either. Millington got hit with a hefty seven years and nine months behind bars, while Riley got a year for his role in the shenanigans. In the end, Morin's attempt to play both sides of the law didn't quite pan out. As it turns out, crime doesn't pay, even if you're cutting hair on the side. Well, we mean crime pays at first, but then it doesn't pay anymore and you're in trouble. You get the idea. Don't do crimes. Here's what happens when prison guards go completely wrong. Number 9. El Chapo Pleased over the border in Mexico City, nine prison guards were arrested for their involvement in the escape of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's finance chief, El Vic, in addition to other inmates. Victor El Vic Manuel, Luis Fernando, and Yale Osuna escaped from Reclusorio Sur Jail during an inmate transfer. They were in a van driven by a prison employees, corrupt prison employees. All three were supposed to be extradited to the U.S. on drug charges. However, they wanted to escape before their American sentencing. The prison employees waited nearly three hours before reporting them as missing. Sadly, we can't really blame the guards in this one. Roberto Barenque Medina, one of the guards, apparently offered another inmate in the van $10,600 to stay quiet about the escapees. He told the inmate to pretend he fell asleep in the van while being taken to a doctor's appointment, or else he would send a hitman to hurt the inmate's family. A month before Medina himself was contacted by the Sinaloa cartel, who threatened his family if he didn't help Elvic escape, he went ahead with the cartel's plan, leaving the inmate's cell unlocked and giving them officer uniforms. Conveniently, another guard didn't check the vehicle before driving the sick prisoner to his doctor's appointment. The three escapees were dropped off and chauffeured to a getaway car. Number 8. El Chapo Not Pleased as the ringleader of the Sinaloa cartel, El Chapo was used to living a life of luxury. But he got angry when someone tried to sell him long johns for $500,000. 
His son was serving a three-year money laundering sentence at a maximum security prison and requested some thermal clothing to keep him warm in his cold cell. El Chapo asked one of his traffickers to bribe prison officials to sneak in the long underwear for his son. The guard charged $100,000, but two other soldiers involved asked El Chapo for a total of $500,000. El Chapo hesitantly agreed and later sent out a hitman to take care of the two greedy soldiers. El Chapo's son was released from prison, but his other son was mortally wounded a while later when two of his men mistook him for someone else. Surprisingly, El Chapo was more upset about the $500,000 long johns than he was about his other son's death. Number 7. Jailhouse Smugglers Some prisoners keep breaking the law, even when they're behind bars. At Cuyahoga County Jail in Cleveland, Ohio, Lamar Spates texted his brother from a smuggled cell phone about the contraband he was about to hide inside water balloons. The drugs came from corrections officer Marvella Sullivan. In fact, this is just one case of officer-prisoner collaboration at the Cuyahoga County Jail. Several inmates previously sweet-talked and bribed their way into smuggling cell phones, vapes, and drugs into the jail. Sullivan's fellow guard, Stephen Thomas, was connected to the overdoses of two inmates and was a crucial player in the smuggling ring at the facility. Thomas hid the drugs in a glove, went to the inmate's cell for a search, and then left the glove behind that contained the illegal substances. Another inmate's girlfriend sent Thomas $1,000 on Cash App in exchange for his services. Thomas pleaded guilty on two counts of bribery, one count of theft, and one count of illegally bringing a phone into the facility. Sullivan pleaded guilty to attempted bribery and trafficking. She struck a deal with law enforcement because she agreed to testify against Thomas. Investigations revealed that she received flirty texts from inmates which encouraged her to help them smuggle things into the prison. In another case of guards smuggling contraband beyond prison walls, four deputies in Richmond County, Georgia were fired for smuggling phones, weapons, tobacco, and drugs to inmates at Charles B. Webster Detention Center. The guards' job description said they were supposed to protect and serve. Instead, they betrayed the law and civilians' trust by sneaking contraband into the facility. They received several charges related to obstruction, drugs, weapons, and more. Number six, roughed up. Sometimes the charges don't come from prisoner guard collaborations, but rather altercations. In Boston, Seth Burgay and Joe Lavarado were arrested after roughing up an inmate who couldn't fight back because he was handcuffed. Burgay severely injured the inmate who was living in the mental health housing unit. Both officers failed to report the extent of the inmate's injuries. They then destroyed the video evidence while claiming the camera wasn't working to cover up the crime. Both officers were arrested for the incident and faced charges including deprivation of civil rights and obstruction of an official proceeding. Put simply, they beat up a guy in handcuffs. Number 5. Networked In November 2016, 49 people were arrested for using their law enforcement badges to protect drug dealers in Atlanta, Georgia. Many charges were filed for smuggling contraband into prisons and protecting drug dealers outside of prison walls. In several cases, the officers agreed to accompany traffickers to their deliveries. They believed if the dealers were stopped by law enforcement, they would not be searched because they had a corrections officer in the car with them. Officers at another prison helped inmates trick civilians into paying fake fines after failing to appear for jury duty. Guards at several other facilities were charged for smuggling contraband, which inmates then used for wire fraud, money laundering, identity theft, and drug trafficking. The state faced a serious problem because of its understaffed prison facilities. Georgia did not have the funds to conduct thorough background checks and was forced to hire unqualified persons at lower wages. They resorted to bribery from inmates to supplement their income. Number 4. Prison Break At Danamora's Clinton Correctional Facility in New York, prison guard Gene Palmer brought two inmates frozen dinners that contained tools for their escape. However, these weren't ordinary prisoners. Richard Matt and David Sweat were serving life sentences for taking innocent lives. Palmer's lawyer initially argued that he did not know there were tools inside the meat or that the prisoners were trying to escape. He later pleaded guilty to allowing them access to an internal prison passage in exchange for paintings and intel on other illegal acts happening with other inmates. He also wrongfully allowed them to cook in their cells and burn evidence. Another prison employee, Joyce Mitchell, was charged for helping them escape by putting tools into the meat, which Palmer delivered to the inmates. 
Sweat and Matt cut through the steel walls at the back of their cells, crawled down a catwalk, broke through a brick wall, cut into and out of a steam pipe, then sliced through the chain and lock on a manhole cover. Teams of dogs and helicopters were deployed to find the escapees, but after 19 days, there was still no evidence of their whereabouts. Finally, almost three weeks after they escaped, police caught up with them. Matt was shot in an altercation with police and passed away. Sweat was taken into custody. Number three, cellmate secrets. Joyce Mitchell also played a role in helping Matt and Sweat escape from Danamora. Her story is so wild, it was featured in the Lifetime series Cellmate Secrets, documenting her role to helping them escape in 2015. The story was also the subject of a Showtime miniseries, Escape at Danamora. Mitchell was affectionately called Tilly by the inmates, and she treated them with more respect than other prison employees. One prisoner even said she flirted with some of the inmates, bringing them coffee and donuts and encouraging romantic attention. She developed a suspiciously close bond with Sweat. During his time in prison, Sweat worked on his artwork and kept to himself but he and Mitchell would leave together for hours at a time. She denied any intimate contact, but admitted to sending him lewd notes and photos. Prison officials were suspicious of their relationship, but Mitchell denied any romantic involvement. Matt also developed a strangely close bond with Mitchell, and she admitted performing certain favors for him. In June 2015, Sweat and Matt escaped the prison using the tools provided to them in their prison meal. Mitchell was supposed to drive the getaway car, but backed out at the last minute when she had a panic attack after the escapees threatened to hurt her husband. When another inmate turned on the television and saw Sweat and Matt had escaped, he knew they had internal help. There was no way they could have done it on their own. The search lasted for three weeks and cost New York State $23 million. Mitchell confessed to aiding the escapees and served four years at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility. She was denied parole, but approved for conditional release in 2020 for good behavior. Number two, lustful ladies. California police arrested female corrections officer Tina Gonzalez for overstepping her boundaries with an inmate at the Fresno County Jail. Eleven inmates witnessed her cut a hole in her pants to get freaky with one of the other inmates. Her boss, Steve McComas, said he saw some pretty disgusting things, but this was by far the most shocking. After Gonzalez was arrested and forced to quit her job, police searched the jail for evidence. They found she'd given razors and a phone to the same inmate she was sleeping with, which he stored in his jail cell. Before she got in trouble, she warned him when guards planned to search his cell, yet Gonzalez didn't show any remorse. She continued to call the jail to maintain her relationship with the male inmate and pleaded no contest to the charges brought against her. While her boss hoped she would get the maximum sentence of three years and eight months, the judge only gave her seven months with two years probation due to her early plea and lack of criminal history. Savannah Dean was another guard sent to jail for her relationship with an inmate after exchanging intimate texts with a prisoner at Park Prison in South Wales. Police searched the convict's cell and found lewd notes and photos from Dean. She pleaded guilty to misconduct and received a suspended sentence at Cardiff Crown Court. In a separate incident, North Wales prison officer Emily Watson met with an inmate on Christmas Day for an extra Christmas present. The investigation showed the pair were interacting through Instagram on an iPhone hidden behind a PlayStation in his cell. Wait, UK prisoners get PlayStation? She also sent him erotic pictures. Watson just got out of a long-term relationship, so the judge believed she was encouraged by the flattery the inmate gave her during an emotionally vulnerable time. Watson pleaded guilty to misconduct in public office and was sentenced to 12 months in jail. In another tale of forbidden love, Melissa Goodwin faced jail time for her affair with one of the inmates at a jail in West Western Sydney. The relationship lasted several months, with at least five acts happening in the prison. Another inmate claimed Goodwin snuck contraband such as tobacco, lighters, and chewing gum for her convicted lover. She pleaded guilty to misconduct in public office. Her prison boyfriend was transferred to a different facility. Number one, escape help. In another case of a female prison employee aiding male inmates, Serena Dodson was arrested for helping three inmates escape from Curry County Detention Center in New Mexico. The prisoners fled in white t-shirts and boxers while covering their heads to shield their identities. Shortly after the incident, Dodson devised her escape but was later found 100 miles from the prison in 
Texas. SWAT teams caught up with the escapees in an apartment complex near a high school. After a two and a half hour standoff, police finally took the three men into custody. Escaping prisoners at Curry County Detention Center is nothing new. They've had over a dozen escapes in recent years. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what you'd pick if you had to choose one. Never have a hot meal again or never have a cold drink again.